Oh, this is not something. I can see myself. It's mirrored acrylic, and it's pretty cool stuff. I'll give you my settings and a few things I've learned so far today on Laser Nug. It comes in a number of different colors, costs a little bit more than a standard sheet of cast acrylic, but I think when used on the right design, it can really breathe some life into it. It's pretty cool stuff. Even though this is clear acrylic, you're probably not going to want to use your normal settings. At least I'm not. I'm going to show you the difference afterwards so you can see the different results. My settings for mirrored acrylic, my fill setting, 800 speed, 20 and 20 on min and max power, no air. It's a fill setting and I increased my lines per inch to 600. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't because I tried it first at lower resolution. My cut settings are the same as I use for a regular 1 8 acrylic, 12 millimeters per second, 75 and 75 min and max, high air, one pass. Here in Lightburn, I just threw together a quick little design here. I am going to go to my fill setting. I'm going to come down into my library. I've created a new setting now for acrylic mirror because it's different. And here's my engraved setting. I've got my fill layer. I'm going to assign it to my black fill layer. There we go. My line layer for cutting it is the same settings I use for my clear acrylic. So I'm just going to run into acrylic here. This is 1 8 of an inch. And I'm going to use my cut here. And I'm going to assign that to my line. There we go. I'm going to highlight my design. But before I send it to the bolt, remember that it's a mirrored acrylic. And you're going to want to engrave on the very back, not on the front shiny part. The back dull part. That's what you want to engrave off or you want to score off. So you're going to want to flip your design. And if you're new to light burn, if you come right up here to the top toolbar, you'll see these little triangle looking things. These will allow you to flip your design backwards or 180 degrees. So in this case, if I click on these triangles here, watch what happens to Snoopy. He flips around. That way it'll come out the right way when I'm looking at the mirror itself. I think we're good otherwise. I'm on user origin. I'm going to want to put that in the left top corner. Just that's what I like to do. And when we put it in the bolt, we're going to engrave the back, not the front reflective side. Let's send it off to the bolt and I'll meet you there. I'm fairly new to lasers like many of you are. All I know is I've been told and I've seen many videos that you should not be engraving on the reflective side. And I think it has something to do with the fact that it refracts or reflects the laser back at itself. I'm not sure if that creates bad things, but either way, we're going to be engraving on the back because we'd like to be able to see it through the mirror or in the back of the mirror forward. I'm going to put it mirror down. I leave my plastic on there. Uh, if you choose, you want to pull the plastic off. You can always put mask on there. So you stop it from getting scratched on your honeycomb, but I'm going to set her into the bolt. I'm going to autofocus, set my origin, frame it, and then I'm going to press start. One practice that I try to maintain is I don't throw my offcuts out unless they're really small or completely unusable. Even if they're just a few inches by a few inches, I keep it here in a scrap pile because it comes in really handy when you're testing out different settings or you want to make a small prototype of something or test your cut or your engraved settings before you actually do it on your final piece. That way you're not wasting or blowing through part of a brand new sheet. They're not cheap. I do the same thing whether it's with my MDF or my plywood or my acrylic or any other materials I have. And when you are looking to try out different materials for the first time, whether it's mirrored acrylic or a different type of acrylic, different types of plywoods or other materials, ask your supplier if he has any offcuts. I'll bet he does. One of my suppliers puts all their offcuts out in the front on a big rack and they sell them for a few bucks each. So instead of having to go all the way in on a big sheet of mirrored acrylic for the first time, I was able to just get a couple of 10 by eight sheets, little wee ones, so I could take it home, test it out, see what I thought of it before I get into a position where I want to use it in any type of a design project and then have to buy full sheets. 
saves a lot of money, and it gives you the opportunity to try more things. And just a wipe with a really lightly damp cloth and now it's ready for paint so now i can paint the back and i can use my mask and paint any colors on any parts of that little engrave what paint am i using i've been using this rust-oleum it's called painter's touch it's ultra cover paint and primer uh, two times i've only got a couple of different colors so we'll try to use those on this design just so you can see the finished product but I've been using it for a few weeks now. I know a lot of people are using acrylic paints on acrylic, and I've seen a few people using this Rust-Oleum product. And to be quite honest, I'll show you in a minute, it holds up really nice and it sticks and adheres really nice and cures nicely. So far, so good. Certainly a lot easier to clean up. So that's my first coat on the red, about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm just gonna spray a second light coat and then after that dries, after about an hour, I'm gonna peel it, remask it, and do the other pieces with the other colors. In the meantime, I wanted to share with you some of my findings using this mirrored acrylic different ways. I'm gonna use the magnifying glass for this part because I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on the naked camera alone. On this first piece, you'll see I have a red piece of acrylic in the middle, and I've used both sides of it. On one side, I glued it. On the other side, I used 3M adhesive. Let's go onto the scope. So on this side here, this is the side that I used number 16 cement on to cement the mirrored acrylic to my red acrylic. You can see though where it was that I placed that number 16 cement. It's almost like it breaks down that gray coating on the back of the mirrored acrylic or the mirrored coating on the back. It kind of bubbles. I guess conclusion of that test, don't use the number 16 cement. On the back, I did the same thing, but I used 3M adhesive here. And as you can see, it's clean all the way through. So definitely the 3M adhesive is the way to go, at least in this test. In test number two, I took this piece of black acrylic, and once again, I used the number 16 cement because I was cementing the metallic or the mirrored acrylic to the black acrylic. But let's take a look again. Just confirming those test results, the same thing happened. Everywhere I dabbed that cement, that number 16, you can see it bubbled, or almost like it started to break down the mirrored coating. So confirmed twice over, not a good idea to use the number 16 cement to cement these into place. In contrast, along this side of the A, this side of the N, and this side of the U, I took the weld on, the number four weld on, and the needle, and I was able to apply it. And in each case, you could see that number four just kind of sucks underneath, welds from underneath, and you don't see any discoloration or any evidence that you glued it or welded it. A couple things I did learn though, if you do by accident drip that number four, don't wipe it. There's a smear mark right up here on the right side of the A because I dripped it right here. And I took my cloth and I wiped it off. And consequently, I also dripped it right here in the middle of the U. But in this case, I dabbed it with a paper towel until it soaked it up. I didn't wipe. And as you can see, the wipe mark was left. So I basically dragged that weld on across the surface of the acrylic. Here where I dabbed it, you can virtually, you can't even see there was a dab mark there. So conclusion being with well done, if I spill it or I drip it, it's best just to dab it and soak it up, not to take your cloth and wipe it across the acrylic. So let's talk about my settings for engrave. I'm gonna drop her back under the magnifying glass. I engraved this first test with my normal acrylic settings for engrave, my less frosty. 
And what I found is it engraved too deep. So not only did it remove the mirrored coating in behind, but it did my normal engrave, which meant that kind of frosty or that almost clumpy look shows up after you've painted it in different spots. Because after all, the engrave is kind of a bit of a rough engrave inside to give it that frosty look. Because really all I want to be able to do is remove this back metallic coating and nothing more. I just want to get it off. But what I don't want to do is to start to go deep into the back of the acrylic. Because then I get a painted review or a painted view of those engraved clumps or chunks of acrylic within in different spots. The next test I did here is I left those normal settings at 300 LPI or lines per inch. And you might be able to see it here, but I'll put it under. Clearly the LPI, the resolution or DPI, whatever you prefer, is insufficient because it leaves lines. It's not tight enough. The lines per inch is not small enough. So you can literally see the engraved lines almost like a grid throughout every letter once you've painted it because you haven't fully removed that gray metallic or mirrored coating off the back. But where I landed was on that 600 LPI, which gave me this beautiful, clean, consistent coloring from the paint. The settings are just enough to remove what you need to off the back. The LPI is high enough that it removes all of that gray mirrored backing but it doesn't go down deep into the white acrylic or the clear acrylic itself. It just removes that layer. And now you can see that is one consistent, beautiful, flat paint job. And it came out beautifully. So just a quick recap. The number 16 cement works great so far for me when you're using colored acrylics on colored acrylics. Not so much for the mirrored acrylic because it's breaking down or dissolving that back mirror finish. The weld on works really nicely on it. So that's a keeper. As long as, you know, I continue to practice and I stop dripping it so much. <laughs> One other kind of really important thing about this mirrored acrylic. Some of you may have noticed the odd scratch showing up in the mirror or this kind of almost bubbled inconsistency that you may have seen through the magnifying glass and a couple of other discrepancies. I know when you pick up any acrylic you purchase, you always check your protective sheets and the tops to make sure there are no deep cuts that might have gone through it into your acrylic. Super important on your mirrored acrylic, not only on the front, but on the back. The scratches and those that bubbled effect or that inconsistency you saw is actually, it's not on the clear acrylic side. It came off of the back because the back was scratched and had some dense, not dense, but it had some digs in it and some deep scratches and inconsistencies. And you're seeing it now on the reflective side on the front, even though the front is not scratched at all. So it's important that you check both sides. For me, I'm not too upset because as I told you, these are off cuts. They cost me a couple of bucks each. But if I was purchasing a full sheet to do a job, I'd not only be checking the protective layer on the front as I normally do, but I'd look extra close at the back and make sure there are no inconsistencies, scratches, digs, any type of inconsistent application of that mirrored material on the back. So I'm going to wait about an hour. I'm going to peel that mask, remask it to put my white on. I'm going to give that a couple of coats, wait about an hour. I'm going to remask it again to finalize with the gray. The nice thing is when you're painting the back is you don't have to try to mask the areas you've already painted. You can just paint over them. Once they're painted, that second layer of gray or white sits behind it. So it doesn't bleed through or come through as long as you give it its proper dry time first. Once I'm done, I'll leave it overnight to dry properly and I'll be back to you tomorrow. So we're back. And there's the end result. Turned out really nice. Beautiful finish, but with one big surprise. So I used three different colors on the back of this mirrored acrylic. It's the first time I used white. If you remember, on the first four or five tests, I used the red and the gray, and they turned out beautifully. Nice, flat, consistent paint job, dries nicely, adheres well to the acrylic. Not a problem. 
This time I used the red gray and I added white for the first time. Hopefully you can see that. If you look at the gray and the red, nice, flat, consistent, even spread, beautiful paint job, dries nice again. But the white, if you look closely at the white, you may or may not be able to see it on camera, but if I look closely with my glasses, it looks like as the paint dries, it kind of cracks a bit. I thought that was a little odd and I thought maybe it had something to do with the engrave. So I did it two more times. One I had to throw out because I messed it up. I think I put way too much paint on. But on my third attempt, I did the entire piece in white just to test the white paint, of course. And once again, you can see that the white paint, as it's drying, it tends to look like it cracked. I thought it may have something to do with the engrave. So this third time, I actually turned it 90 degrees, so I engraved it on a different angle. But the same thing seems to be happening with the white color. If you've got any suggestions or if you've had any experience using this Rust-Oleum or an oil-based spray on acrylic, I'd love to see it in the comments and I'd greatly appreciate it. Other than that, I think my settings worked out great. Seems to engrave as they did the first four or five times during the test as I zoned in on that 20% and that 800 millimeters. And I hope it's been helpful for you good folks. Give that mirrored acrylic a try if you can. It's pretty cool stuff. Have a great week. Please be kind to one another. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nut. Cheers.